Hello and welcome back to another episode of Skyrim Requiem 3BF Tweaks. This is Saiken and I'll bring you the Diaries of Death. It just dawned on me that I've never really explained my concept behind Diaries of Death and so I figured I will visualize it, which makes it easier to understand before we jump into the run. So for those of you who are under, uh, interested in understanding how the series works, stay tuned. Elsewise, just use uh, the timestamp. Um, Diaries of Death actually is kind of a death, uh, death is, dead is dead or permadeath run uh, compilation that I figured I really enjoy seeing other people like being on the edge and having that thrill of losing a character that really appealed to me but yet uh, equally it always kind of abruptly ended and I wasn't really 100% sure where each of the characters uh, was going sometimes uh, the author didn't really finish it sometimes it was just a stupid death in, in the mid games um, and sometimes frankly the build wasn't that interesting or achieved what it's supposed to achieve uh, for those of you who want to start Requiem or have just started out there is also quite a uh, a bit of difference in between the difficulty of uh, the game since it's a leveled world there are different tiers and i figured i want to create a series that really caters to a consistency in uh, kind of uh, following everyday uh, characters but b also allowing to to see concrete milestones and then I will let the audience decide whether or not they find the build or the character interesting and if the journey should continue. So it's a shared universe, uh, the Skyrim world, and I'm trying to broadcast or uh, more show very diverse builds that are competitive in the nature, but uh, that are trying to focus on different aspects of uh, the, the game. And basically by doing that, I decided to go into three tiers. Uh, tier 1 being starter characters, that's the vast majority of what many people will do, hence more content is uh, geared towards that. And tier 1 milestones for kind of achievements that are realistic could be uh, finishing the Companions quest line, the Dark Brotherhood, Thief, uh, Thieves Guild, the Civil War quest, or say more difficult uh, side quests such as Pot uh, Potemus or the Wolf uh, Queen or Godur's Amulet. So all of that is realistically doable at level 20 uh, if you do it right and if, if you want uh, to go for that milestone. Afterwards you've seen uh, the, the build and those builds uh, which are deemed to be interesting enough to progress would enter the mid-game, uh, as I would uh, call it, which is Falmer Dungeons, uh, things like the Forge Master as kind of a an enemy on the upper part of uh, the, uh, the, the mid-game, the College of Winterhold quest, Dragon uh, Priest, really the bit more tougher content, including uh, Dragon Hunts uh, and so on, they would certainly fall in, into that uh, territory as well. So essentially those characters who survive Tier 1 are up for voting and then can progress to Tier 2 if you want to see content uh, there. And eventually, if I make it far enough with a character, they would um, theoretically qualify in order to uh, take up uh, the big guys, which is in in the world of Requiem, Alduin, so the main um, antagonist of uh, the normal game, uh, game Mirak, uh, which is Solstein's main antagonist, and Karstak, uh, which is the Dawnyard DLC boss. And those definitely are more level 34, uh, 35, 40 plus upwards. So pretty uh, tough enemies uh, to beat uh, in, in the first go. Anyways, to showcase uh, what we've done so far really is um, I've looked into a couple of builds. We started on uh, uh, Season 1 with Hams of Debella, which was an illusion-focused heavy armor-wielding knight with a two-handed um, uh, sword. Great gameplay mechanics, although the build came up a bit late. And I also uh, got quite a few learnings in uh, melee combat. Many close calls on this one, but Hamza made it through. Uh, second uh, uh, series was Ron the Snake, which was a poison-focused dual wield build. And unfortunately, Ron didn't fully make it, although the build itself, I think, had a lot of merit and was interesting to play. Uh, Ron is out. Uh, his, his diary is closed. He's unfortunately dead. We got Hermetheus. Uh, that was season three, which was kind of that retribution-style paladin. Sword and board, uh, one hand uh, with a shield and restoration magic, but also... 
uh, some sort of offensive magic which he late uh, late in the series skilled into was a fun build uh, much much more durable than the other ones and finally Geoffrey Delors uh, which was our Fal uh, Falstead martial ranger no magic uh, and just purely focusing on archery and elemental arrows very fun build to uh, to go with different I would say com competence levels of uh, builds somewhere a bit um, lower power somewhere a bit higher power anyways long-winded way of saying what have i cooked up uh, today we are being joined with a new build and that's what i'm going to show you in a second which is patrick the monk i figured i will um, dive deep into the underpowered category and go into unarmed fighting and this is really what um, season five of diaries of death is about let's join and see what the build looks like Hello and welcome to another episode of Diaries of Death. Uh, my name is Saiken and today we're following the uh, story of Patrick, the monk. A poor soul that found his way into the ever-drawn conflict between the Imperium and the Nords. A conflict that he never wanted and a conflict that he really didn't want to be part of. However, Patrick's order has unfortunately been drawn into a bloody massacre. Uh, they were undefended and unwary of an attack. The Stormcloaks assumed that this is just another elaborate plot of um, uh, hiding Imperial material. As such, all of his comrades were slaughtered and he was left for dead. The next time he awoke, he found himself in custody. The Imperials offered him food, recovered him, cleansed his wounds, and all he can now think about is take revenge for the many lives that had been taken from him. His brothers in spirit have passed away and he is now the only lone standing member of his former order. With that, his diary starts Patrick certainly has a lot to, to consider in his lifetime and he has a vested interest in participating in the civil war. Uh, he wants to restore order just like a monk of his, uh, of his standing would do but he equally wants to take some revenge for the unjust uh, that has been given to his order. What are we going to play? Um, There's going to be three BF uh, Requiem uh, permadeath run. So as always, one death and we're out. I am playing an Argonian monk. And those fancy ropes are uh, psychic uh, ropes that I've given myself uh, before anyone loses their temper about it. Is All they do is they look good, quite good actually but they have zero stats whatsoever. And that will be the name of the game and the limitation here. I figured I want to play a monk that really truly focuses just on his inner key. And the way that I want to represent that is he's not really a spellcaster, but he uses key in order to manifest like body, body enhancement. So we're going to do some alteration and that's the only thing that we dabble in. And the rest will be unarm, uh, unarmed combat. So the build will... Uh, mm, uh, consist mainly going through the major uh, trees will consist mainly in the main skills of alteration we're certainly going to do some one-handed combat specifically the uh, dual attack flurrying and so on we'll take some evasion because uh, we need to be quick on our feet we certainly take um, some alchemy because that's likely how we're going to heal and we're going to take some dexterity uh, due to uh, the whole um, line of brawling for unarmed damage as well as grappling or boxing focus so that's really the idea of the build i'll splice in some lock picking and some sneaking because uh, after what has been done to patrick he's not always playing fair and in in order to represent that We'll also uh, go with um, a blessing that is not a good one uh, for once. We want to go with a Daedric uh, blessing. More precisely, 
I was uh, thinking about uh, Sanguine. In this case, I tested out Nem uh, Nem uh, Namira, but Namira would be more something that a werewolf type of character or a character that has other forms um, of uh, combat would take. Weapons are very much uh, yeah, advised. Sanguine, on the other hand, is an interesting one. It's really the idea of a drunken monk. I don't want to uh, create the picture of uh, Patrick as the, I don't know, Bruce, uh, as the uh, Jackie Chan version of a funny, humorous monk. He, he actually uses alcohol to overcome his deep anxiety about what happened. So, a couple of things for Sanguine. When you're intoxicated, you can see clearly um, and you gain a combined of 60 extra unarmed damage uh, whilst under various addictive substances. And that really stacks. So you do have alcohol uh, for once. Uh, you can use Skoma on top of it without the risk of uh, dying. And there is uh, even a third uh, layer of addictive um, moon, uh, tier, uh, moon tiers that you can use in order to uh, up the um, damage. And I found that concept not too bad. So hence we're going into alchemy and cooking. Dedicated followers uh, will get up to 40 unarmed, uh, unarmed uh, damage scaling with brawls one. So we're going to beat others up quite often. Uh, and I'll do a couple of questions to get to those brawls. And uh, if we ever possess uh, the Sanguine Rose, we would uh, get another 40 damage. So that'll potentially be a nice little side uh, goals. However, there is a downside to all of those powers. Um, we would lose stamina and magicka whenever we're not under the influence, which is almost like creating a small little um, yeah, substance dependency. And we need to kill at least one person uh, in order to make this one work. I wish to very much follow this uh, deity and you can already see that we are losing uh, valuable magicka as we speak. So next up the birth sign and the birth sign I really thought about there's a lot um, the, a lot of uh, the less interesting or the standard ones that I could show you. Poison would uh, not be too bad uh, but we just had Ron the snake and I don't want to create another character that is similar-ish. So what I am uh, proposing is I'll actually take something that hasn't been taken that often, which is the tower uh, standing stone. And the idea here is we get 150 armor rating uh, off the bat, which is great. Whenever we are standing uh, still or move slowly, we'll take 25% uh, uh, less damage and we get 40 carry weight plus on top of it it uh, helps us to open locks and uh, in increase expertise with uh, pickpocketing so the 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 tower is really kind of a thief type of uh, stealing role play um, um, stone but i want to make it semi-interesting this is not going to be a huge power build it's actually going to be quite a difficult playthrough in order to make it work my idea was the 150 armor uh, that we get uh, from this uh, birth sign, plus the Argonian racial bonus, uh, which is another 100 armor, already bring us to 250 armor from uh, the ground up. We have lightning resistance on top of that, which is great. And the downside of, um, of Sanguine, which is a poison weakness, can be compensated by our natural poison, high poison resistance of 90. And we also have a very high natural disease resistance of also 90. So overall, uh, the character feels somewhat um, armored. If we can get alteration to work on top of it, we would uh, get even more out of it. In terms of skills, what I would want uh, to start with is um, novice alteration. Yes, please. We're going to go with Mage Armor for more armor and Candlelight in order to see better. So that's a good start. That's the only magical skill. And like I said, I don't really want to flavor it as magical. We want to go with uh, Dexterity. Not because we want to steal, but with 15 Dexterity, we can already get Brawl. And that is going to be a huge upgrade for us. And I want to go with Evasion because with 20 evasion, we will get the dodge perk and the dodge perk is again a huge upgrade. So um, it's not 
directly starting out with all of uh, these skills um, at a perfect level, uh, admittedly, but it's a good first uh, start that, uh, that we could take. We have okay-ish health. We certainly don't win any contests uh, with that, but it'll be good enough. So let's do that. And we're going to do that. And we need the fists. And we're going to do that. And we've already lost too much Magicka to even cast our armor. But that is okay. So the very first things, and I will use this here as an example of how to start with like literally nothing. We have five green apples and that's about it. Um, can eat them and then maybe cast a mage armor. There we go. With mage armor, we even have leather armor type of uh, standards. So the first thing that we would want to do is we want to get some uh, food going. Cooked beef is good. We can use garlic um, and we could use more cooked beef. So if you do not have a, uh, an, uh, a deity that will punish stealing, might as well use that to, to your advantage. In our case, uh, we're going to uh, steal quite a few things. Specifically, booze. We need uh, we need wine. And these here are empty bottles, though, so I gotta find wine really, really fast, or any form of alcohol. There's a bit of an armory going on here. None of that will be helpful for us. We don't want to use any other uh, equipment, so that will not be helpful either. And really, the only thing that I want is Sir, half of alcohol. Good, we don't want to go into the dungeon, but we want to take uh, the private entrance here. Thank you. And there's our wine finally. Good. Now with this, our continuous uh, degeneration stops and we can uh, go and start exploring plus get some more alcohol, steal some more alcohol really here and there. What I will do is uh, I will show you how to start and this really goes for any city with just the resources that you do have. So take a look at what the characters can do. Argonians in particular can uh, brew potions without the need for an alchemy perk, which is why I haven't immediately skilled into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up uh, really nicely with um, a, bit of, uh, a bit of a collection of uh, ingredients. Solitude is a good starting point for that. And we're going to use that in order to brew our first um, a few potions, just so we do have enough of a starting advantage. So in order to uh, not go through the entirety of me collecting it, I'll just do a fast forward and we meet at the alchemist table. All right, so we are done with our collection. It took a while, about... 15 uh, minutes because here is what I did. I went through the entirety of Solitude, got everything. Uh, the plants will regrow over 15 to 30 days. So um, if you fast forward, you could even recollect it. Then went to Catalyst Farm uh, to the Solitude Sawmill and went all the way uh, alongside the main road uh, through here to the Denti Slot, Solitude Lighthouse and even uh, to the entrance of Brinewater uh, Grotto. There is a chest here, which you can uh, freely loot. It's not, uh, it's not contested. And the entire way, 
there is zero interaction with any en animal matter of fact uh, with any enemy or animal uh, matter of fact all of this here is completely safe unless you're walking uh, during the night and all of this here is mainly barren there is not much that's happening brinewater grotto of course you shouldn't enter but everything else is fine so what did we get ourselves out of uh, that besides stealing quite a bit of food we got ourselves um, quite a few di uh, different um, uh, species of uh, ingredients and I will show you a few um, just basic potions that you can do in order to get started. So one of uh, the stable standards that I often use is Blue Mountain Flower together with wheat. Uh, you can directly go ahead. It uh, not only fortifies your health, um, which is super helpful at the beginning, but it also is almost as good as a healing potion uh, for the start to a deficient one. I cannot stress enough how often that recipe has helped me. Another one that is quite stable for me would be the flame bane. Um, so we do have a bit of drank tongue, you, uh, tongue that uh, grows here in solitude and we do have some uh, mushrooms. Uh, fly uh, Amanita in this case. Both together create a poison of uh, resist fire. On top it increases dual uh, or two-handed fighting. So three potions of resist um, fire. Good enough for now. Let's do the same with Ice Bane, Purple Mountain Flower and Thristal Branch. In this case would be the right things. Purple Mountain Flower has many great usage, uh, usages. And one of them is resist um, uh, frost, so that's really, really good. Um, in terms of just going uh, forward, we uh, still need uh, to stick with the resistances. Resist magic would be one of uh, those uh, things. And I got my hand on two Nern roots. Um, that's not uh, those grow not frequently, but you can find them. Um, and um, we also have lavender and chicken egg. Chicken eggs again are not very frequent, but lavender certainly is. And the way that I'm doing this is we'll go with both of the Nern roots and then we'll go with both of the lavenders. So that way we have plenty of resist magic and you can already see a trend. It's like healing, it's resist magic. Um, it is resist um, uh, resist frost. So all of the things that you typically would want uh, to uh, to see. Uh, we do have in increase of um, increase of stamina. In which case that would be fly aminita and mora tapiella. So that here is a good one. Gradual restore stamina, better than the normal stamina potions. Very good at the uh, at the beginning. Um, and if you want to do something else with stamina, you can do the forti uh, fortify stamina, which is good. So another utilization of lavender uh, together with garlic, which I stole. Mind, mind you, the moment that you brew, uh, uh, brew, uh, brew something uh, with it, it will no longer count as uh, stolen. So you quote unquote launder it and uh, make it usable. And finally, the last one would be an affliction poison. Um, you can use red mountain flower uh, uh, for that. Uh, Nern root would have been efficient, but um, uh, equally efficient is nightshade. Uh, you can definitely use uh, that and death bell. I'm using all three here to make the poison as strong as possible. Uh, potentially didn't work that well. Now that's okay. Good. We don't need that much poison and I'm not even sure if you can in this version here poison your uh, your own fists. So let's leave it uh, mm, uh, as is for uh, for now. So those would be just basic recipes that you uh, that you could uh, do. There are still a couple others. So hanging moss uh, plus uh, blue uh, mountain flower as an example uh, would uh, would give uh, the health increase. But it comes with a high toxicity, so I'm tending to not use that as much. Um, and with really that few decent upgrades uh, for the beginning, you can already get started. There, there would be more that we could uh, brew, but for now, just looking at what we've gotten ourselves is more than enough, right? So we got um, fortify health with healing. 
fortify stamina. We got normal healing potions. We got uh, potions of a long regeneration. Um, gradual restore stamina. And we got all of uh, the resist potions which are helpful. Plus a few um, uh, po uh, poisons for later. So that'll be a pretty soft start uh, for us. As uh, we don't have much else going on uh, for us so far. Good. So Patrick is set. We can take it from here. Let's get good old Patrick here started. Do you have business with the court? Falk, do you have any leads? Put out a bounty on some bandits. Here, take a look at this decree for details. All right, sounds like a good plan. I can always find time to share a word with the Imperials are good for business, and business is good for Scott. I'm a Thane. Oh. If you're inquiring, the Thanes have every confidence in general. Good. Do we have a second quest? Be quick. I have little patience for mundane concerns. No, 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 no. No. Take care of yourself and always remember. If you have business, please see Falk Firebeard, my steward. Be well. We don't want to go into Wolf's Skull Cave. Uh, that would be the Petona, uh, Potena quest line. And that's way above our uh, grade at the moment. We just clean there. So instead, we are. This here is the Civil War quest, so we're not going to do that right away. Instead, what I would want to do is we're starting with uh, some miscellaneous quests, and we're doing a bit of exploration. Orphan here. That's an interesting first choice. So let's take some northern shore action uh, and just do a couple of bandit camps up here uh, to get situated and hopefully uh, be able to get a level or two out of them. Okay, we're close to a bandit camp and we got Hello good old Talsingar here. Should use that to our advantage. And bring some of them down. And already here, crossbow bolts. The life of and song is the life Take some of good us. cover behind him. All right. Some may find their inspiration tucked away in tomes, or by carousing in the cities, but I find it here in the vast expanse. Ah, I let him stay place. here. Come on, just stay with me here, Talska, for one more minute. Hello there, friend. Well, lucky for you to chance upon a bard. Until next time. One of them is coming closer, and I want to make sure that Talskar here stays with me. There we go. I'll get Mage Armor going. Oh wow! Did he? Did he really just almost get Talskar gone down? Okay, two more range damage dealers. Okay, careful now. I want that and that. Archer or crossbow? 
archer. <laughs> that worked out well. I don't need the arrows. What would I do with them anyways? We find something that is semi-valuable, that might be it, but we're playing armorless. So I'll put a caveat on that. Uh, should I take the wooden crossbow just to pull enemies? Maybe I'll, I can. I could convince myself that that could be something that a monk could do. We we'll look into it whether or not we're really going to go down that route. Uh, currently, I need an alto wine. And we slowly but surely need to heal up. I think this is yep, where the orc died. I like the tomato soup. That's a good idea. Healing poultress. Okay, none of uh, the first Kembo bandits counts as a murder. And also, uh, and although slaying a rabbit is a hideous task, who would ever do that? It's still not a murder. We increase dexterity. And we're out of lockpicks. That was the only one we had. I guess I can't open the chests. We don't have enough. No, we don't have enough stats yet. Okay, well, it is what it is. Yeah, we're not even close to a level up. Good, so that was the first camp. Next stop, let's move further northwards. All right, time for us to face our first real challenge. Killed a little bit of uh, wildlife and got quite a few alchemical items, really. But this is where the real fight is going to go down going to engage with a couple of bandits okay we gotta use the few openings that we do have I can take you. she's vastly out uh, reaching us Can't power tech yet. Don't have any perks, so it's just a little attack here and there. And you can see we're not dealing a lot of damage. Plus, we need to get in and out relatively quickly. Yeah, power tech takes half of our stamina. That's not acceptable. Also, too slow at the moment. She's down. I can take you. Yeah. Oh. 
Very good. First real one on one. Three hundred five armor. I suppose that needs to be enough for now. Try to sneak, but that really isn't working out all too great, is it? Okay, I, we can take on a uh, knife wielder. We cannot take on that guy. Alright, run, run, run. Oh my gosh. Are we, is that a trickster or are we talking about a real caster? Whatever it is, got it. Create some distance here. Ooh, wow. That's scary. I saw fire and lightning magic, but I'm not sure what we're dealing with. Major armor is gone. Take a good look. Luckily, we got fire protection. Lightning, not so much, but the rest. Um, I tell you what, we're not going to use any weapon. That's the whole shtick of this run. So no abusing of ranged uh, weapons. It's either melee or it's not happening. So in terms of potions... We got a few, so maybe we'll just see if we level up. The biggest bang for a buck would be evasion, 20, for dodge. Or the other alternative, dexterity, to 15 for brawling, which is likely even a better investment so let's start with that and evasion on its way yeah but we're not even close uh, to an upgrade so evasion 20 would help us dexterity brawling would help us as well yeah it is what it is Desperately trying to get that level 2. Okay, cool. Well, the bandit leader. Um, this here should help. I need to wait for his openings. He has a much faster strike speed than the two-hander, though. Come on, power attack. Wow, fast blocking. I need to be really quick with the follow-up. And can't have that happen. Like this schmuck level one bandit is already giving us a hard time. But what do we expect? Unarmored, unarmed. Can't fast enough hit them. I can give him a bit of damage from time to time with his openings.
little bit of a beach battle here. Nope, not happening. Come on. That was a good one. And yet another potion. Wow, this is intense. The costly. Fortunately, we don't even have a poison going for us. <laughs> there you go. Well, I hope that teaches you a valuable lesson. We will create new potions, no worries. For now, celebrate the victories. Yeah, that's this is definitely not happening. I'm mainly looking for your drinks. Orphan's Tear. My memory served me well. There was a master chest in here somewhere. We got some Skoma. Skoma is good because that will further increase our damage. Okay, apparently... No, no. Oh, gosh. Come on. There we go. Finally. That was good. Re uh, good reward. Unfortunately, not what we were looking for. As an Argonian, we can um, we can hold our breath really long. I think in F tweaks they even change it to water breathing, so it's effectively indefinitely. Bone meal, good. We can use that for quite a few recipes. I'm getting the hang of it. Yes, yes, an inside potion, and that is sales value right there. Okay, listeners, as good as, good as it gets uh, from a bandit camp. My first impression of the build highly underpowered. Like, we're Barely dealing any damage. And we're getting our teeth kicked in. Would be easier with full armor. But yeah, it is what it is. We will wear full armor... Um, full armor gloves eventually. But for now, we are where we are. Cool. So let me trade in uh, those bandits. And I think we will make our way to Riften. Because we need a damage upgrade and I need a stamina ring. Uh, so the standard classical start there would happen. See you in a bit. We made our way to Riften. Paid the entry uh, tax. We're down to only 600 gold after selling everything. And now it's time to get two important items for this build. A couple of gloves and a ring. The idea would be to just pass by both of them, get the items, and then... And then come back.
Hey! Go on, Skeever. Bring it on. Good. And now it's Mano e Mano. Ah, the finishing moves are fantastic. Crush! Oh no, oh no. Well, we're going to hide behind the traps. Alright, he's completely ignoring that, apparently. You're good as dead. Come on, give me an opening. Got one hit there. Hitting hard. Apparently, those traps do absolutely jack shit against him. Nothing. Not even getting a reaction. Come on, an opening, please. Yeah, that's why I can't just simply attack him. There's the opening I was hoping for. Oh wow, he is perked into bashing and interrupting my attacks. Bring it on, buddy. Die, damn you. Ah. You're good as dead. Just waiting for an opening. Yeah. Yep. Every single time I just attack, we're I'm getting interrupted. There isn't much we can do against a sword and board type of fighter, other than wait for openings. You won't get away from me. Just stand still. Finally. Finally. Good. So, we got ourselves some booze and a few gloves. And like I said, the one exception to what we're elsewise uh, doing is we're uh, going to use gloves of uh, the respective type. Uh, with that, we finally got better stamina management. We got slightly better armor class. And it's time to get the rest of the dungeon. Someone there? Ah, found you. Okay, hopefully she's going to be a bit more aggressive than her predecessor. 
definitely doing more damage now. Every single hit hits her for 30 ish. Death is highly overrated. Death is highly overrated. <laughs> what a badass way to go. Can't really open that one. Now it's time to deal with an archer. And I am wondering just for completion. We should get Magicka regenerated and actually go for a mage armor. We're not really a caster, and it takes Patrick a while to focus his, his sonic abilities. Okay, so no gloves. And put gloves back on. Well, stayed in their dead zone the entire time, and our attack speed is is really good. We just need to get a little bit more damage going for us. Upgrading a few more skills. Uh, we wanted to get evasion to twenty. Haven't leveled up yet. Close, but not quiet. Good. Next up, we'll try the Red Wave Vaults. Good. Time to prepare this. How do we draw a lot of attention? If no spells, nothing. Well, we do have candlelight, that's about it. So that's one down. There are plenty more to go. I'm not sure how well we're going to fare against all of them. But one way of finding out, potentially pulling them up. And basically fighting them up here.
Good. Off we go. Into the Thieves Guild. So this guy is done for if you're looking for conversation, uh, the flag and his like I asked. Yeah, threw it at the lake like you said. No, you I have to get the second. And last marauder here. Oh she died with a trap. Well that is cute. a couple of rats might as well take uh, the alchemical ingredients because they work quite well with a few recipes and now it's up to us to open the um, safes down there I'll do that offline and we'll take the next challenge work in your life for all that coin I suppose we are. can uh, instigate a couple of brawls and uh, in order to do point. that uh, we, we need to join the it, thieves guild first it's all about the way they walk what they're wearing look how you sniffed out my little wealth is my business I've got a bit of an and in my line of work simple once you have it I want you to play there's someone now you tell me when you're ready and we'll get Good. Good. Wait until I start the distraction. He gets ready. We're not really going to do that, but we can still join the thieves guild afterwards. Helmets, pretty much anything to suit your needs. Let me finish that starter. I'm telling you. Good. We made it. Time to join the thieves guild really quick. The first quest of the thieves guild is one where we need to get them money, and that involves three brawls. Keep in mind. <clears throat> We need the brawls in order to uh, fulfill the blessing and make our melee things stronger. Now that I've whetted your appetite with our little scheme at the market, how about handling a few deadbeats for me? The OR, I want you to explain to Kidama. We're not going to really join the Thieves Guild. I just want to use uh, that opportunity. Good. If you need any details on your marks, I'll be here. Just want to use uh, that opportunity to uh, get some better melee attack damage. And one easy way of doing that is beating up other people. So here we go. Uh, three brawls incoming. All right. So can I... What? So Brynjolf doesn't even bother to show up himself anymore, eh? Don't fool yourself. It's all I'm going I'm to for some brawl, that's this. why we're really here. What are you caring about the gold? Alright, Bercy. Well that's it. Alright. Well, it's the first brawl uh, one against the guy who's losing his hair. Extended hairline. Don't let him get away with this. Not making fun of that, but basically he's not the youngest and freshest. Come on. No more. I'll pay. I'll pay. Here. Good. Next up. We'll see about. Here we go. Argonians are not shy or discriminating. They're just hitting whoever is available. In this case, Helga. Okay, so two brawls done. One more to go. Here, take your damn coin and get out of here. I swear it. 
Unfortunately, she's too reasonable. She already gave us the hundred. Hmm. But we're turning in the quest. We're not going to join any further in the Thieves' Guild. It is what it is. We made decent progress. So, dumping bodies and keeping the guards. Well done. Here you go. I think you'll find these quite useful. Judging from how well you've handled those shopkeepers, I'd say you've done more than simply prove yourself. We need people like you in our outfit. Well, that's all good. Come back, luck. Stick with me, and he'll never even know. Judging from how well you've handled those shopkeepers, that's this. We might want to join um, in order to be able to fence off stolen goods. You can. Now, if there are no more questions, how about following me, and I'll show you what we're all about. I think you better listen to Mercer and Brinio first. We could talk later. Good. We don't need to do that. I am okay the, uh, the way we currently are. Don't need to push forward. I don't want uh, this to be a Thieves' Guild run. This is uh, a Civil War run. And I think this is also a good moment in time to increase skills once more. And then call it a day. So we got the level up. I definitely want to go further into health. We need a stamina as well, but I will alter between both of them. Yeah, I think this is even, even more important than evasion. Unarmed attacks do 30 more damage, which is great. 50% less stamina and finally power attack is uh, there as well. 25 uh, skill level is needed in order to either go with grappling focus which allows us to disarm and knock down um, an armor pr uh, penetrate or well, more movement speed more attack speed and armor penetration look not all bad not all bad cool I think that's a fair end uh, for today's episode thanks for watching guys if you want to try improving your unarmed skills um, uh, at least consider punching that like button and see you in the next episode bye bye